G'day everyone and thanks for stopping by for episode 4 of the Adventure King's Beginner's Guide to Camping. Now my name's Khan and as Breno has already told you, I'll be helping you set up and sort out your vehicle's electrical system so that you can run all the luxuries from home wherever you go camping. Well actually, you can't really run everything from home, but you'd be surprised to know just how much gear you can actually run from your vehicle. All right, because this is a beginner's guide, I'm gonna keep it fairly basic and build up from there. So if you are more interested in learning more about 12 volt or electrical setups, or you wanna hear some expert tips and tricks, then definitely check out the four part 12 volt masterclass I've done here on our YouTube channel. Now forgive me if you already know this, but it's worth covering the basics as a starting point. Your vehicle's electrical system has a couple of main parts. You've got the starter battery under the bonnet that allows the vehicle to start and then provides stable power to the engine and all your accessories while you're driving. Think of your starter battery under the bonnet as a rechargeable battery. It's almost like your phone. Use it too much and it will slowly go flat. And if you use it too much without recharging it, it won't turn on again. But unlike your phone that you need to physically plug in, the good news is your car already has a charger inside, and we call that the alternator. Now when your engine's running, it's spinning a belt that's spinning the alternator, and that keeps the battery charged up, so you can think of it as a battery charger. So running your car and using battery power by plugging in accessories is just like using your phone when it's plugged into the power cord. The battery will stay topped up. Now if your alternator or battery charger is the second main part of your electrical system, then the third part is accessories. Anything that uses power, whether that's your headlights, power mirrors, windscreen wipers, anything you plug into a SIG socket or USB port, or even your vehicle's computer. They all work together in a sort of loop. Your accessories slowly drain power from the battery, and then your alternator is there to charge the battery back up or keep it topped up. Now the problem is, if your vehicle is off and you're using accessories, it's gonna slowly drain that battery down and there's nothing to charge it back up. If your battery gets too low and goes flat, you won't be able to start your vehicle and you'll be stuck. And that's why so many campers add a second battery to their setup. Your main battery or starter battery is there to start your vehicle and run any vehicle electrics while you're driving, but then once you turn up to camp, you can turn the vehicle off and run all your camping accessories from that second battery. So you can run your fridge, camp lights, all your gear, and not worry about flattening your main battery. You could use a completely separate battery and just run your accessories from it while you're camping. A battery box makes this super easy. It's easy to carry, plus you can plug everything directly in. But that means you'll need to recharge it after every use. Just like your mobile phone, you'd have to go home, plug it in and charge it back up. Now the other option is to actually charge the second battery while the vehicle is running. That way you're charging your main battery and your second battery at the same time. If you want to charge your second battery while you're driving, you can't simply connect both batteries up directly without having something in the middle. Otherwise, when you turn the vehicle off, what's going to happen is all your accessories will simply drain the same amount from both batteries, meaning your starter battery is still flat and you won't be able to start your vehicle. Charging your second battery while you're driving might seem like a lot to take in, but bear with me and I promise it's pretty easy to understand. There are a few options you can put in the middle between those two batteries to prevent them discharging at the same rate, which will stop you from being stuck at camp. Now the most common are a smart battery isolator and a DC-DC charger. A battery isolator does exactly what it says in the title. It isolates your batteries. So it will completely separate your second battery from your starter battery into two separate systems. Now the smart part of the title is because you don't have to do anything, it's all done automatically based on your vehicle's voltage. Now that sounds like a lot, but all it basically does is when the alternator is charging, it senses that and connects the two batteries into one. When you turn the vehicle off, it realizes that and separates the two batteries. Keeping the batteries separated means your starter battery is always left fully charged, ready to start the vehicle. Remember earlier we were talking about your alternator as a battery charger for your starting battery. 
Well, a smart battery isolator is perfectly matched with your standard alternator. Once your vehicle's on, it'll connect both your batteries and then your alternator will actually charge the starter battery and your second battery at the same time. The issue is most modern vehicles built after around the mid 2000s have what is called a smart alternator. Now rather than alternator that just charges your starter battery whenever the vehicle is on, a smart alternator can actually adjust its output and it's usually based on how well charged your starter battery is. So if you've been driving along for a couple of hours and your starter battery is fully charged, your smart alternator may turn off. Now if you've got a smart battery isolator, it'll see that the alternator is turned off and disconnect the two batteries. You're still driving along, say you have a fridge running off the second battery in the back of your vehicle, it's now drawing power but not being charged back up. So you could end up in a situation where you're draining power from your battery without realising. Now the other problem that can pop up is if you're using two different battery types that require two different levels of charge. And when you're buying a battery, that's something to look out for. So if your starter battery needs a certain level, but your secondary battery needs that little bit more, it may never get fully topped up and could reduce the overall lifespan of the battery. A good solution for both of these problems is a DC-DC charger in between your two batteries. If you think of your alternator as a battery charger for your starter battery, then the DC-DC charger is just a charger for your second battery. That means both batteries are getting their independent charging, so they're going to be fully topped up and get a good long life. And more importantly, your DC-DC charger can be connected to your vehicle in such a way that it knows when the vehicle is on or off, rather than just relying on the alternator charging or not. That means that even if you're driving along and your smart alternator does turn off, it knows you're still driving and continues charging your second battery. Again, a DC-DC charger will isolate both batteries into separate systems so that while you're at camp, your second battery is providing power to your accessories and when you're ready to start the vehicle, your starter battery is fully charged. Once you kick your vehicle back on, your alternator will start charging your starter battery, your DC-DC charger will start charging up your second battery. Now, if you're not sure if your vehicle has a smart alternator, do some research online or speak to an auto electrician. And if you do want some more info on DC-DC chargers, again, make sure you check out that 12 volt masterclass series. Batteries work most effectively and they're happiest when they're fully charged. So it's better to try and keep your battery topped up than be trying to constantly recharge an empty battery. And a great way to keep your battery charged up, particularly if you don't intend on doing much driving, is to use solar power. It means you can be relaxing at camp using free power from the sun to keep your battery charged. Not bad. You'll just need to roughly work out how much power you think you'll need in order to buy the right size solar panel. But the good news is, bigger is always better. Your battery's not going to mind if it's getting extra charge, but it will struggle if it's not getting enough charge and it's constantly being drained. So get the biggest solar panel you can afford or the biggest that you have room for. Another option could be running a generator and a separate battery charger to ensure that your battery is fully topped up wherever you are. The thing to think about though is that some campsites have regulations on the usage of generators depending on their noise levels, so it's something to look into. A great way to keep an eye on your battery's charge level while you're at camp is with a battery monitor or watt meter. Not only can you see how your battery's doing, but it will even show you how much power is coming out of or going into your battery. So if you've got your fridge running and your solar panel set up, it'll calculate any power going out and any power going in and display the total. Hopefully by now you know why it's such a good idea to have a second battery, why it's a great idea to have it connected up to your vehicle and how you can keep it topped up all the time. The next thing to think about is how much battery power you need and what type of battery to get. There are plenty of different battery types available, but the two most commonly used in camping setups are AGM deep cycle batteries and lithium batteries. Now lithium batteries are awesome and they're super modern technology, but for the beginner, they can be quite cost prohibitive. So in this video, I'm just gonna talk about AGM batteries. So what is an AGM deep cycle battery? 
Well, AGM stands for absorbed glass matting, and it's simply the type of battery. It generally means that they're leak proof and safe to use inside your vehicle. Now the deep cycle part of the name implies that they're designed to be used to a low level over a long time period. And that's very different to your starter battery, which is designed to be used quickly for a short period of time to be drained and then quickly recharged. So a deep cycle is ideal for running fridges, camp lights and all your other gear day after day for a weekend or weeks at a time. Most batteries can't be drained all the way down to 0% without sustaining some long-term damage. And particularly in the case of AGM batteries, they prefer being fully charged all the time if possible. So to make your battery last, ensure you keep it topped up or charge it up as soon as you've finished using it. As a general rule with AGM batteries, you don't want to dip below about 50% of their capacity. That'll give you a good balance between usability and long life. So if you're looking at an AGM deep cycle battery with a 100 amp hour size rating, you can realistically use about 50% or 50 amp hours of that battery's capacity. But before we go any further, let's jump into a quick explanation of an amp hour and what it means for you. Every electrical device runs on a certain voltage. So in most vehicles, it's a 12 volt system, but they also need current running through them in order to operate. And current is measured in amps. So an amp hour is simply the measure of how many amps are used per hour. So that means with a 100 amp hour battery and a fridge that draws one amp hour, you could expect around two complete days and nights of your fridge running before your battery needs to be recharged. Armed with that info, you can begin to plan your system and shop around for what you need. But for those who are just starting out, a 100 or 120 amp hour AGM deep cycle battery will do just fine. It'll allow you to run your fridge and camping accessories for around two days and nights before needing to be recharged. Plus, if you're driving every day or you have solar power and sunny days, your battery will be charged up a good amount every day anyway. So to sum up what you'll need to basically run some of your luxuries from home while you're at camp, is you'll need a battery and some way to charge that battery. Whether it's a DC-DC charger or smart battery isolator, or a generator and battery charger, or solar panels, or ideally a combination of a few of them. Once you've got those basics covered, the next step is an inverter. An inverter actually takes the 12 volt from your vehicle and converts it into 240 volt AC, just like your power points at home. And this is where you can really start to run some of your luxuries from home. Whether it's a coffee machine, a microwave, or even a hair dryer, you just need to look out for how much power the appliance needs and how big your inverter is. But the measurement you're looking for here is watts. If you get a 1500 watt inverter, it'll only run appliances that equal 1500 watts or less. That could mean one appliance that's 1400 watts or two appliances at 700 watts each. The important thing to look for is a sticker on the base of your appliance or potentially on the cord that actually gives you that wattage. If it's less than 1500 watts, it's good to go. There are two types of inverters, square wave or modified square wave, and then pure sine wave. Square wave inverters are old technology, and while they're okay, they can cause some sensitive electronics or tools a couple of issues. Pure sine wave has a very smooth, constant and reliable output that's exactly like your power points at home. So it's gonna run all your sensitive electronics or anything that needs good quality power perfectly. And just a note here, inverters when they're running at their maximum can draw a lot of power from your battery. So if you intend to make a coffee, for example, it is a good idea to start your vehicle first so that your battery's charging while the inverter's running. That's gonna take the load off your battery. A secondary option would be to ensure that you charge your battery up as soon as you've used it. So you might think about going for a drive or ensuring your solar panels are set up and charging. Finally, you could increase your battery capacity by adding a second battery so that it shares the load across both the batteries, not just one. So there you have it, episode four of Adventure Kings Presents The Beginner's Guide to Camping. A basic guide on why you should set up your 12 volt system properly so that you can run all those luxuries from home while you're at camp. Whether you can't go without your morning cuppa, 
you just want a quick and easy reheated meal on a cold night, or you want your hair to look at least somewhat decent while you're camping, then you can't go past a well set up electrical system. Now as always, make sure you throw any comments or questions in the comments below because in the final episode, Breno and myself will go through and help you all out by answering them. Now, if you're into this stuff, 12 volt electrical and all this, make sure you check out the rest of the channel because I've done a whole 12 volt masterclass and plenty of other videos focusing on the topic. Finally, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss out on anything else in this awesome series. Because Breno is back in episode five to help you make your campsite even more comfortable.